not dividing our audience into those niches, not dividing our plays into those niches either. It doesn't need to be a black play to get a black audience. And we shouldn't think of it that way because that is a going after dollars mentality. Julie. Uh, now I'm all mixed up. There are so many things that I had to say. Um, so it may all be vague and ranty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but we forgot the internment of the Japanese. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean to forget your people and your stories. <laughs> Thank you for remembering. Um, uh, I've not been uh, really anywhere else in the world uh, outside of Canada regarding theater, but I'm from Montreal, and the difference there between the, Frank, the, the Franco, uh, Francophone theater and the Anglo theater in Montreal and across Canada is that there is a culture of theater and a culture of performing arts, and there is not a culture of performing arts in Anglo Canada. I don't know if you would agree with me, but I think that if there is, it's just started. You know what I mean? There's been a history of, of it being an essential part of existence. And, and I, I find ourselves fighting. And so I actually um, put a lot of stock into children's theater because I think that if we are gonna start a culture of theater and not a culture of television, because that's what we're fighting against. That's the reason why Mambo Italiano did so well, because he writes like TV. He writes like a TV sitcom. And I think that uh, if we're gonna start a culture of theater, then it starts with the children, right? And it starts with the teenagers, and, and what, how, whatever the, the answer is, is I'm, I'm not sure what that is. But I think that, I don't know, it, it's interesting to look into, you know, why are we fighting so hard? Because I, because I agree, you, you can't. I mean, I think that all of our responsibilities as, as artists is to do what we want art to do in this in this community, in our country, in our in our culture, and and not to cater, like you said, to the audience, because you're never gonna get everybody to agree in the theater. You're never gonna get everybody to like it. You're never gonna be able to bring in one. Uh, one area of the community. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what my point is, but... That was all pretty good. But it's about, the, it's about cult, uh, somewhere finding, like, getting our, our hooks into what, how we can start and sustain a culture of theater as opposed to a culture of movies or television. Do, um, do you think it's mainly through the cultivation of young audiences that is the secret behind them creating that culture of theater? I don't know, see, I, I feel like it, it, the French theater, uh, it comes, it's, a, it's been there for a long time, and part of it, I think, is because it's so isolated, and because it's so political, and because they're so, because it's such a proud culture that's fighting for their culture to remain uh, that culture in the, the bigger Anglo uh, Canada. Um, and so there's they're already a built-in audience. Just like at Buddies, there's a built-in audience. Um, and I can't really, I don't really know where it comes from. It's just, I find it really interesting because Anglo Theater Montreal is shite as well, and it's really hard. <laughs> as well. As well. I mean, it, I mean, it's a sh <laughs> she was just in my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 While the microphone is traveling to that woman over there, Franco is going to say something. Oh, I, I mean, I don't. I mean, uh, I think that there's really exciting work here as well. I mean, I, but I do want to say that Robert Wallace, in his book *Producing Marginality*, talks a little bit about the uh, um, the culture in Quebec and speaking about that the language, in a way, uh, uh, was really an important. Um, ground of a uh, grounding for Quebecois work and that Quebec theater uh, developed uh, directors developed uh, physical vis uh, visually based uh, work and 
English Canada was largely preoccupied with playwrights and writing. And so the, the two developed in different ways. So it's hard to, it's hard to compare the two, but at the, other, the, other, at the, other, the other thing though I have to say is that this is something else from the book, um, which is a really good book actually. It needs to be updated. He needs to, he needs to uh, do a new one. I know. Uh, but anyway, producing marginality is it. But he talks about in, about institutions, and he talks about in English Canada enshrining institutions or putting money in, in institutions that enshrine the past, as opposed to uh, developing a culture of now. Um, and it's a, I, I don't have the quote properly. It's a it's a beautiful quote. But um, but he, I think that there's 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 definitely stock in that. You know, in the 80s, they were putting money into Lepage, Gia Mathieu, uh, Marie Chouinard, and we were busy building um, massive uh, spaces. You know. Yeah. How well they service now? We're in the last rows of the. Yeah. You didn't think I was referring to the actual art being shite? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the other state more. <laughs> okay, we are in the last like two minutes, so oh, you are right. probably the last question before. Is there really staff? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Right. Um, just really quick, then, just to sort of go for, towards uh, building a culture. Um, I, I really think the fact that we have facilities in the city as well is a huge problem and has really affected how audiences are, are interacting. And it's, it's a whole long conversation, I know, but I think part of the problem is that on the incubator level, um, the small scale level, there's no place for them to create. You know, mm -hmm. it's very expensive to rent theaters. Because we do have are falling apart. The, the theater center not having space like that's permanent is ridiculous. I mean, they, they do amazing work and they don't even have a home to call their own. The theater museum is looking for a place to house the collection that house our history, and we don't even have that. So, just quickly making the point that that preserving the facilities and putting money into facilities on a small scale level, I think will also go towards creating a culture and creating an environment where audiences feel they have a place to go to to experience the art. I have to comment on that. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a big no, mouth. Man, I'm a big mouth. Okay. Um, the super build money that was a couple of years ago that was given to a lot of, of institutions developing their large projects, which is great, and it's really good that we have an opera house. It's really good that we have these, these larger houses. Um, there was supposed to be some money in the provincial budget uh, this go around for small to mid-level, uh, you know, institutions uh, that was supposed to support the infrastructure through Arts Build Ontario, which is a program uh, that is run through PACT and TAPA and a, a Theatre Ontario, I think. But that wasn't there. But what was in the budget this this year was a 5.5 million dollars that went to Luminato, the Festival Luminato, which is a festival that's 10 days. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not begrudging the, the, then the cash, but I guess the, it's, it, what's important is that we invest in the bottom. We have to, you have to develop a culture from the bottom, because if you don't, then the center is going to fall apart. And I would say the bottom is with young people. Yeah. We're investing 3% of our arts budget in young people. Mm -hmm. How are we going to sustain yeah. a future with that? 3% yeah. of, the, of the... Of the Canada Council's budget goes to theatre for young audiences. And one out of four performances mm -hmm. in English Canada is a theatre for young audiences play. Mm -hmm. So we're doing an enormous amount. It's a huge success story. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a real paradigm shift Scotland spends 15% of its arts budget on, on, on arts for young people. And if you think about it for a second, wow, what a progressive move to have art such a civilizing force <laughs> at the center of young people's lives. Another colonized people looking for its voice. Mm. Oh, Mike, we're done here. Tell us about snacks. <laughs> so I would like to thank uh, our panelists very much.